This is a Tibet House member video and is a part of the Force for Good class series, now available at tibethouse.us. Anyway, so I'm yeah. wondering why the Lam Rim is um, put out in stages since we tend to learn um, all the stages at once. We get different teachings about um, each of the different aspects um, um, out of order frequently. I'm just wondering what the Lam Rim does to make the teachings easy because I always see myself going to um, the second stage before anything else and then going to well, renunciation. that's not good. If you jump into compassion without really having compassion for yourself, real compassion, not the kind of compassion for yourself that makes you take pains with your hairdo. That is not true compassion for yourself. That, although that's a, that could be nice. It is a majestic hairdo. I completely agree. Thank but you. that is not true compassion for yourself if that were your main point, which I'm sure it isn't in your case. I'm sure you're seeking to produce pleasure in those who see it. So you're being other regarding. But if you haven't first had true compassion for yourself, which is where you realize that it's not really that important what your hair is, looks like, mm -hmm. and it's not, it's, you have a low priority on it, and your real priority is at all times to be aware of the uncreatedness, in fact, of your hairdo. You know? When the people met Buddha, actually when they met Buddha, and he just said, come here, mendicant, their hair just all flew off. <laughs> <laughs> it actually flew off. And their clothes changed, and they had this uh, saffron robe on. That was the, his instant ordination, if you will, or graduation into the mendicant order. And they were completely blissfully happy to be out of having to pay taxes, having to earn a living, having to bring up a family, having to do any of those things. And they were living on a permanent, eternal free lunch, which that country was rich enough to offer them, and people were generous enough to give them. And they were then able to only focus on what was truly important. And it's not like a Western monk or nun who's kind of sort of flagellating themselves and their sinner qualities and so forth. No, it's like being a free person. The mendicant is therefore, monk is a mistranslation. Bhikshu doesn't mean monk. Bhikshu means mendicant, someone who lives on alms and homeless, purposefully homeless, not seeking, not owning a home, not pretending to own a home, but being at home everywhere, actually. Kimne, kimne, you know, anagarika, as they call it, houselessness. That, but that was possible in such an advanced culture and wealthy culture as ancient India. And our culture, we, you know, we are, that's not possible. People go, America's the richest country, that's a bunch of baloney. We're totally broke. hundred times over we're broke, America, already. Because we wasted so much money in military expenditure over the years, which is a useless expenditure. And now we gave it all to the banksters, and they have created 1,200 trillion dollars of CDOs and CDSs for which they took commissions. If you want to wonder why they're so rich. Meanwhile, it's all worthless, 100% worth it. It just simply devalues the entire economy of the planet and leads to Greece. And, and yet they are being honored and and you know, you know, Bernie Sanders is way right. I'm sorry, way right. Mm -hmm. And those who think they can get along with them and just take it, it'll be fine. You know, they're not being compassionate to them, because those people who have like sold the world one thousand two hundred. When the crash happened, there was only eight hundred trillion out there. Now there's one thousand two hundred trillion. Anyway, sorry to, I didn't mean to be offended about your hairdo. No, no, it's fine. But mentally, I saw your hair flying off, but don't go shave your head, I'd be embarrassed. I know. Don't, don't go become a mendicant. I know it's what stands. You can't be a mendicant in this culture because they won't feed you the free lunch, you understand? Mm -hmm. They won't. They'll say, no free lunch. This We're is an industrial my society and everybody has to work and be productive. And those women have to cut it out about being professionals and get back and have more babies. So we can sell those babies more baby food and more pampers and more things. <laughs> they, no, I'm, this guy from McKinsey, 
in, in some big conference, all these business guys said, hey, don't worry, guys, we're going to have 9 billion people on the planet in about 25 years, and there are going to be 3 billion more in the middle class, so you can be selling to them, you know. What a complete lie, you know. Complete demented, uninformed yeah. person. I had to get up and be party pooper and say, if you have 3 billion more in the, in the middle class, meaning having the same number of cars and same number of power plants and all this, you will have three billion dead at the bottom. And also there'll probably be no oxygen left on the entire planet for anybody to breathe at all. So if the, if the Chinese people had as many cars per capita as the American people, we'd be fin there'd be no oxygen. I believe th there's a calculation like that. That would burn all the oxygen on the entire planet. <laughs> Just driving home. Everyone would choke to death. So they're just so foolish, those people. What, what is the answer to practice? My answer to that is it's very teaching. good that you study about the stage of completion or perfection, if you will, mm. because then you might be able to imagine what would be possible. Mm. But if you try to do it without uh, first mastering the vision, visualization, visionary, what's called the stage of creation, better than development, but creation, stage where you recreate the universe in your imagination holographically. If you try to do it jumping ahead, it's very, very dangerous and you'll likely go crazy. And uh, so therefore, a person would be irresponsible to pretend to you that you can do stage of perfection, just, just what the heck, you know, no problem. So, and you'll know that yourself if you read a good description of it. And I happen to have translated a book called The Brilliant Illumination of the Lamp, which you can find on the shelf out there. And if you read that, and patiently, it's, plow, it's hundreds of pages, 500 pages, 600 pages, and you realize the different things, uh, body isolation, speech isolation, mind isolation, um, non-dual, you know, illusion body, this kind of, or magic body, as I prefer to call it, you will see what's possible, at least according to the claim of the people who really did do it. And that will, might give you inspiration to really get back and master the vision thing and not be impatient and really learn it. And you have to learn that like when you go to art school. You have to find a lama who will teach you how to draw the mandala building, like that three-dimensional dollhouse. You have to learn to make one of those, also to draw the ornaments of the door and of the whole thing like that. And then all the different body, Kala Chakra, you have, you have 360, finger, 360 finger joints, thumb and finger joints, which are 360 days and they have different colors, blue, red, and white, and different colored fingernails, etc. And you have to learn where you can hold that all in your mind simultaneously, so you have to develop shamatha to do that. So it's a big job. It'll take years to do. And if you do that, then you'll, it's, you, then you'll naturally melt into the perfection stages. You'll begin to melt into the perfection stages. First you go creation stage, Course creation stage, then you go subtle creation stage, then you'll melt into perfection. And reading about what it is, rather than just how do I get to do it, but reading actually what it is, will, may inspire you imaginatively to want to do the preliminary things that are required. And even to really do the visualization thing, you have to have the motivations of the Lamrim. Because it's only that the Lamrim is, I said, as I said at the beginning of today's class, the Lamrim is considered the preliminary to being initiated and it having the motivation, proper motivation and safeguards to be, uh, and, and initial level of wisdom, you have to fully understand what's called the royal reason of relativity before you can safely do the visualization. Because if you still have a, a, a un, unmediated, unremedied sense of absolutizing what you see, when you see internally in your visualization practice like a holographic crystal diamond ruby mandala, you're going to absolutize that thing and you're going to go into a psychotic state. And then you're not going to be able to get out of that. You have to be able to melt, you have to realize that no matter how exquisite and magnificent a mandala is or a deity body is, it's only a construct and it's only a relative thing, finally, also. Even the sense of Buddha identity is only a relative thing. You have to know that viscerally not to become, not to shift habitual absolutism into these, you know, miraculous and ecstatic and exquisite, as exquisite visionary things, right? So that's why you need the wisdom and you need the compassion so that when you start getting a little bit of energy, 
you don't get tempted to play around with magic and manipulate things and really get in trouble. And you have to have the renunciation in order to be able to not be swept away by the powerful energies that you will find in your own unconscious and become the victim and the slave of either Eros or Thanatos. Okay? That's so that's a lamrim. That's why, that's why you need the lamrim too. And, and you can't even get anywhere in the lamrim until you're really viscerally aware of the infinity of this moment because it's causing your infinite future moments, not just in this life, your body of this life, but infinite future. Right? That makes that puts a huge intensity in this moment. Right, doesn't it? Okay? All the best. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching, and please be sure to like and subscribe to support the ongoing work of Tibet House U.S. Tashi Delek.